Hey, what's going on guys? So a few weeks ago, I shared a video of me making this entryway console slash shoe bench. But after using it a few weeks, I found that this top cubby was just a really inefficient use of space due to its shape. So the obvious thing to do was build some drawers. Now if I was to build all the drawers for a rectangular opening, I would just cut all the pieces for all the boxes at once. But I'm not. So I focus on the bottom drawer first, which has one side angled at 45 degrees. The first cut that you see me making on this piece was just to cut it down so that I could fit it into the cabinet opening in order to mark the final height that this box needed to be, and also to confirm that the angle was indeed at 45 degrees. Then I could just adjust the fence on my table saw to make the second cut and bring the piece to its final width. The other three panels of the box were all cut with the blade set back to vertical, but I had to adjust the fence slightly to make sure that these vertical panels will end up being flush to the angled panel once they're sitting properly in the opening. And at this point, I only cut the side pieces to their final lengths because they'll both receive rabbits for the front and back panels to sit in, so the length of the front and back panels will be determined after a dry fit. With the drawer slides and the side panels placed in the opening, I marked where to cut the front and back panels. And since they'll both get a 45 degree cross cut on one end, I marked the line so that I don't end up cutting the piece too short, which, you know, I've done before. Now, if you've been following my builds for a while, you would know that this would normally be where I'd use my router table to cut the dados for the bottom panels. But since the right panel is angled at 45 degrees, the dado also had to be cut at a complementary angle for the bottom panel to sit horizontally. That's why I'm using my table saw for this. And since the other panels would sit vertically in the opening, the dados were cut with the blade set back on 90 degrees. And oh yeah, before I forget, I made two passes for each dado to get them to the proper width, before cutting the drawer bottom from a piece of quarter inch MDF. Afterwards, I did a quick dry fit to make sure that all the pieces fit together nicely and that the box fit in the opening with all the proper clearances. And then I just followed the same process to make the other two drawer boxes, which were just straight up 90 degree cuts. And once all of the pieces were cut, I prepared them for painting by sanding all of the surfaces up to 220 grit. And then I also took a piece of 120 grit sandpaper to lightly go over the edge grain just to get rid of some of the fuzz. No need to get it super smooth at this point. The most important part of painting MDF, it goes without saying, is to prime the material. Especially the edges because it's so porous and will suck up any paint that you apply to it. So I covered up the edge until there was no MDF showing, and then let it sit for a couple hours until it's dry, then came back to sand the edges smooth all the way up to 220 grit, before starting the same process on all of the surfaces. Once the primer dried, I applied two coats of this bright yellow paint left over from the crib and dresser I built for my kid over a year ago. If you're also digging this yellow against walnut, let me know in the comments below. But if this really isn't your cup of tea, I'd also love to hear what your favorite colors are to use on wooden furniture.
with the painted drawer boxes set aside to dry, I began to make the drawer fronts, which will be made from two layers. The bottom layer of the drawer fronts will be made from half inch MDF, and then painted yellow like the drawer boxes. The top layer, however, will be made from solid walnut hardwood. I made the rib cuts and the cross cuts at the same time for both of these, since we want the two layers to be flush when they're attached. After sanding and priming the MDF drawer fronts off camera, I began the process of making the curved reveal for the walnut layer by first making a template on a piece of quarter inch MDF. Now, the more symmetrical you can make this curve, the better, because the reveals will line up a lot better between the drawer fronts once they're in place. I traced this curve from the template to the walnut pieces and removed the bulk of the material using my jigsaw by cutting just outside of my lines. Then I used a double sided tape to attach the template to the walnut to finalize the curved shape at my router table using a flush trim bit. For the reveal to also function as a finger pull, I used a 45 degree chamfer bit with a bearing on top to put a bevel along the curved edge. And with the walnut pieces all cut to size and shape, I came back to the MDF layer to apply a couple coats of paint, then sanding the walnut pieces and applying finish in between the paint applications. And finally, I can start installing the drawer slides. I usually start by using a scrap piece of offcut to set the position of the male side of the slides on the case. And then I would position the drawer boxes in the opening to determine where to mount the female side of the slides. Since I work in this order, I didn't have to finesse things to try to get the slides, which mounts to the sides of the drawer box, parallel to each other, which would be rather difficult since one of the slides will rest on an angled surface. And once the bottom drawer box was installed, I could then just work my way up from there, using the drawer box below as reference. The two layers that make up the drawer fronts were just attached together using some brad nails. Then using some plastic cards, I kept them spaced evenly in the drawer opening before securing them to the drawer boxes with a couple of screws from the inside. Mm -hmm. 